Hey, I'm Scott Hansman. It's Azure Friday. We're talking with Pranav Rastrogi about advanced Azure Web Jobs features. Yes. Pretty cool stuff. So we're in the SDK. We saw in previous videos how you can have an Azure Web Job that's just a script or a batch file. Or a PowerShell or Python, like whatever you want. Whatever you want. It's but in this way. case here, it's almost like we're going to do uh, what I think of as, as ASP.NET model binding. Exactly. Something yeah. something similar to that. Like um, so, what what you just showed you over here is this is a function read from queue, which is listening on any new messages on this queue called scale queue, and as soon as any new message comes, mm -hmm. it's gonna the SDK is gonna trigger this function. And if I may, let's take a look at this function and just put it like this. You have a function called read from queue that takes a string, and we've got an attribute, a, 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 a C sharp attribute, a .NET right. attribute. Yes. That's the attribute is not on the function. It's not on the class. It's on the, the parameter of this uh, particular function. And that, so you're going to invoke that. You, the web job host, are going to invoke read from queue. Exactly. And magic is going to cause string message to become populated. Yes. Is it magic? Well, no. <laughs> it's the web job's SDK. <laughs> so what Scott just mentioned was these two lines where we're newing up the host, and host is job host is the one that's listening for hey. I have this function called read from queue. It's listening on this queue called scale queue. And as soon as any new message comes, it's going to pick up the message, serial it as string, mm -hmm. and populate the message object. So this right. is just basic, hey, I put a message, a string message on a queue, and I'll read it out and call this function with this message. So but then I could put other attributes on top of that to say that that's coming from somewhere else? Yes. So you can have queues, you can have blobs, and you can have tables. Mm. And so far, like we've Going further down the pipeline, we're looking at, say, you want to use service first queues as well. Or maybe we open this whole model of you have a type that you want to basically pick up messages from, and maybe like file watchers, for example. Very uh, cool. So that's basically what's going to happen. So what this function tells you is like, hey, I saw a message on this uh, queue called scale queue, and this message is like string, like hello world. So let me just model bind uh, this message to this type called string. Okay. Uh, but what basically what happens for a lot of these cases also is that let's say you have you're doing some sort of image processing uh, where you're reading from streams or you're reading from file system and then you're converting it to stream or a byte array and stuff. Right, but ultimately bytes are being uh, being processed. Exactly. You know, a, by an array of bytes is being processed. You've got an input array of bytes and an output. Right. But you want to kind of think about that at a higher level. Yes. Yes. And then a classical example of this uh, is, <coughs> and I, I love this example, is basically because it squish newly <coughs> uploaded PNGs. Somebody wrote a blog post about it. Yeah, I wonder who. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> so what this function shows you is basically, this is a squish it function, and it operates on streams, basically. Mm -hmm. And now you want to run the same function in Azure, where you want to use blobs as a storage mechanism. And, and streams are, are .NET things. Streams are Azure .NET, thing. like you know what stream we call stream is a byte array. BCLs, byte BCL, BCL, basically the base class library. So base just to make sure people understand, streams aren't an Azure concept. It's yep. the it's the .NET equivalent of an array of bytes. Exactly. And our whole goal is sort of made it easier for this function to run in Azure and start using like blob storage as a persistence mechanism. Gotcha. So what we did was we have added. Uh, the web jobs SDK. We showed you how to sort of read from queues and you know bind to strings. Okay. And in this example, what we are doing is we are using this attribute called blob input. So in this case, we are listening on blobs, mm, and then which we is are, an Azure concept. Which is an Azure concept. There we go. And we are binding, let's say a blob image. So you have uh, foo.jpg, and we are binding the contents of the blob image to the stream. Ah. So you know how to do stream, you know how to operate on streams or input arrays or text readers or text writers. Mm -hmm. And the web jobs SDK basically adds the triggers and bindings and lets you run the same code that you were running locally using streams and file system and now running in Azure using blob storage and you can scale your web jobs based on like Azure websites as well. This is really important because I think that someone could write a console app that used the Azure SDK to go and read physically on purpose from blob storage. Yes. But this kind of is an inversion of control. <laughs> like dependency injection, isn't sure. it? Sure, yes. Right? yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> 
That's actually that's a, a good, good way. way of, that's yeah. a good way of putting because it. Like. Rather than me going and having a dependency on the blobs, which would mean I couldn't test it locally, very and then easily, force it on you, and force it on me. Here, we're going to inject the blobs in right. effectively. And a good point about this is the whole code is also unit testable. Like there's nothing hmm. that sort of you cannot abstract. Like blob input and output are just basically attributes, and streams are streams. Like nice. These are like .NET BCL types itself. So this is all great. I mean, uh, so we have now support for you know I can bind to simple strings. I can bind from blobs to sort of streams, text readers, text writers as well. But I can also do some sort of advanced binding as well. So well, streams pretty low level. Streams pretty low level. You have access to the stream. But let's say I wanted to have my own custom binding over here. Like I have this my favorite image helper class that I know I love it. It knows I can sort of do resizing with it. I can add watermarks. I can do sort of a lot of transitions and manipulations around it. So I can basically. But Azure doesn't know about your image class. My Azure doesn't know about my image class. I see. But Azure knows about uh, blobs, and Azure knows about uh, <coughs> uh, queues as well. So this is the same example. Like you know, I have my watermark image. Mm -hmm. I'm listening on this blob. Right. And I'm binding to web image, which is my own custom class. This is something you did. This, this is, is not a I .NET did. thing. This is you. This is me. This is me. Okay. And so let's look at the definition of this web image. Okay. So I have registered a web image binder, and this is a whole web jobs SDK concept where you can register custom binders. Okay, similar to we're doing a model in binder. Model binding. In, exactly. In so you have you know basic model binders for strings, your custom POCO types, but you want advanced model bindings for like inheritance classes and stuff, then you can plug in your own custom model binders. So okay. it's the same concept over here. All right. So web image binder is an iCloud blob Bob stream stream binder. Right. Oh, of type web image. That's your helper class. That's my helper class. Okay. And what I'm doing over here is basically I'm reading the contents of the blob and I'm streaming it back to the web image class and creating an object out of it, so that I can use this web image class in my own application itself. Do, mm -hmm. Does it always take a stream because it is an iCloud blob stream binder, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's an iCloud iCloud blob stream binder, that's why it takes in a stream. <coughs> that makes sense. So then I could really I can see just by looking at this. If I wanted to do a PDF binder, oh yeah, absolutely, it would be five minutes. I mean, is there anything else below this, or no. is that basically it? That's basically it. That's yeah, it. so I could make a PDF binder or a Word document binder, and then manipulate it on the server side. So right. I could have something that would add watermarks to Word documents. Oh yeah, or PDFs or any any binary file, and I could use my own classes. Yeah, and a, and a, and a great ex actually a great extension. Would now that I think about it is like CSV readers, like. You can write your own CSV binder as well. CSV? Yeah. Do you think that the, 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 the promise of the cloud is <laughs> to allow us to process comma separated values? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. To the cloud. <laughs> to the cloud. <laughs> so that's an example of you know how can you plug in your own custom binders as well. And sort of to take it a step further as well, like you know, what we're trying to do with the SDK is we we're we are providing you with this uh, sort of base level framework of getting started and making it easier for to, for you to use uh, blobs queues mm -hmm. but we also are, are giving you very advanced uh, capability as well let's say if you wanted to bind to custom cloud storage types uh, oh by the way how do i how does azure know about web image model by my model binder did i have to register it or did it just nope. figure it out because it was in the same class you didn't have to register it like uh, the sdk looks for this web image mm -hmm. and there's already a web image binder registered in the system so is it, it the name it's the name so <laughs> it's it's type and then the word binder yes that's nice. also a nice convention that we sort of just discovered oh, one less configuration to worry about one less configuration to worry about exactly <clears throat> so what was the next thing so the next thing i was going to show you basically was uh, you know for all these bindings mm -hmm. we also give you the capability of binding to raw cloud storage uh, SDK types itself. So what I've shown you so far is a great examples of you know I want to bind to streams, I want to bind to my custom web image binder so that I can have better image processing. But in a lot of these cases, I don't want to have access to streams, but I want to have access to the raw uh, blob image itself, the blob content. So I want to do some sort of uh, queries around. Uh, Let's say what are the attributes of the blob? Oh, I see. So are not you necessarily on the contents. You don't want the access to the byte array. You want the access to the envelope. Yes, the metadata it. of ah. the particular blob content itself. So you have that capability as well. Hmm. So it's a nice curve where you start off really simple. If you care about like you know image processing, I want to move this code up from my local machine to the cloud. Like use blob image, use text stream, readers, writers, use web image, 
if you want to drop down and like look at the envelope and see what's happening with the blob message, then you can also bind to Cloud Blob itself. And uh, add additional metadata, look at dates and times and size and all that kind of stuff. Whatever you want to do. Like, Very yeah. cool. Hey, we're doing advanced web jobs. It's Azure Friday. Thank mm -hmm. you.